All right. Hey, welcome, friends and um, church family and people that are maybe in another area. Um, I'm excited to be able to share some things with you today in regards to faith um, and, and living out faith and uh, health and safety and, and just as a Christian, being able to walk together through this. So um, I know I'm starting a little bit early, but i um, just hoping that as people come in that we'll be able to um, join together and people could also uh, look at this video later on. Yesterday's uh, video, it looks like it reached about 2,000 people. So thank you for uh, sharing that and um, inviting people to watch along with you. But I'm going to begin today with just some scripture, some things that I think would be helpful. And I think even um, for those that are seeking and those that maybe don't know whether or not, um, you know, they believe in Jesus and it's a time for them wondering about these different things that we could actually uh, listen to some of these words and hopefully um, the Holy Spirit will help these make sense to you. This is Paul writing to the Philippians. Paul the Apostle was a follower of Jesus that was actually in prison when he was writing this. So sometimes when I think about people that are going through hard times and we're going through difficult times and and yet in comparison, I know that there's people around the world that are going through a much more difficult time than I'm going through. In some ways, it doesn't seem quite real until you go outside and you drive around and the kids are home and, and all these adjustments, it's almost like we're kind of waiting for it to get quote unquote normal again. I don't know if that's how you feel, but it's kind of like I'm waiting for um, this sense of everything returning back to the way that it was. In likelihood, um, our world has changed in many different ways. I don't know if sporting events are going to look like the way that they've looked in the past. You know, will people want to gather together like that at, at concerts? And, and so in all of these things, I think that there's a tendency to go inward, to start focusing on just myself and what I'm thinking and what I'm going through. But Paul writing from prison to the church in Philippi said this, he said, therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if there is any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. So I just want you to listen to these words and let them sink in. If there's something that you have been encouraged by, some comfort that you've received, some consolation, Paul says, hey, if you've received any type of comfort of love from God, from others, then what we should do is we should be like-minded and look for ways to share the comfort that we've received. We're giving to people something that, that helped us. And sometimes it's a text, a, a scripture, sometimes it's a phone call. Uh, I'll tell you a, a great thing would be talking to people live and in person. And it, it's a blessing sometimes to do it digitally, but realizing that connection other than text, a, a phone call, FaceTime, those things would be helpful. Just share some of the things that you've been encouraged by. And then he says that we are to have this same love and to be of one accord and one mind. Now, again, this is 2020. This is an election year. Regardless of your political affiliation or your views, it's not a time for us to attack others. It's a time for us to um, really share the things that are encouraging us. And it's okay even to be different than others in their views. So when that happens, listen, be respectful, consider another person's perspective and point of view, and let's just choose to be the people that, in a sense, in our world today, bring some of that calm and bring some of that love into our world. And then listen to this part. He goes on to say in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. So it's a time when everyone is thinking about themselves. And, and I, I get it. I, I have the same tendency. So before all of this happened, um, I have a go bag. I have a backpack that is in my closet that is specifically, um, if I were in a Jack Bauer situation, that I would just throw that thing on my back and I would take off. It was kind of funny that, you know, as I would do this, you know, kind of in my nerd, um, you know, um, survivalist mentality. Uh, I, I remember watching, you know, Wolverines, you know, go Wolverines. You, you remember that movie? Uh, just when everyone is kind of hunkering down and there's something about me that I've always wanted to prepare for something like that. 
but I don't want it to happen. Now that we're here, it's kind of made me realize that in some ways, a survivalist mentality is good if it's to help others, if it's to help my family, but beyond my family as well. The danger in a survivalist mentality is that it's all about me and I'm no longer thinking about others. And I could see people in lines at grocery stores or uh, people that are trying to get supplies and, and almost like there's a tendency to see people as living germs. Um, you, you walk by people now and, and if you've been outside, it's kind of like, you know, you, you kind of back off from people and, and it's important to be safe. It's important that we take care of our physical well-being but listen to what Paul says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. In lowliness of mind, you know, you don't see a lot of humility on social media, a lot of uh, humility when it comes to um, some of the debates or discussions that are going on. It says esteem others as better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So if you're out there today, how are you hurting? What is some way that maybe you need some help? You could even put some of those things maybe in the comments and other people might be able to comment. We wanna keep those things um, helpful. So understanding that in times like this, there are elderly people that are not even supposed to go outside, some of them living on their own. And it, isn't it a sad thing to see elderly people get stares from others like why are you outside right now but maybe they're outside because there's no one to get groceries for them and they have to go on their own maybe there are people that are um, going through difficult times you know I, I think about restaurants right now um, we live in Santa Cruz County where there are, are Christian camps so hourly workers school workers um, all of those people are going to be struggling during times like this. And let's not only look out for our own interests, but the interest of others. Why? Because in verse five, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So where do we get this idea? We get this idea from looking at the example of Christ, who didn't just think about himself, but thought about others, laid his life down and showed the example for us. Now, I'm not at all suggesting that we go out and do something that is foolish. But what I am saying is that for me as a pastor, I've had to look back at history and to see how did the church in times past deal with things like this. People like Martin Luther that dealt with the plague in Wittenberg and wrote a, an essay, a letter to a friend about whether pastors should stay or flee Wittenberg. And one of the things he said is he said, I will not go out into crowds needlessly. I don't want to inadvertently put someone at risk and, and thus put my life in danger and their life in danger. He said, but if someone calls me, I will go to them and I'll pray for them. And I think that that's kind of that balance of caution and wisdom and at the same time, sacrifice and caring for others that God calls us to have. Now, I do wanna share one other scripture in our short devotional time, and it's in the same book, the book of Philippians. Remember that Paul is writing from prison. I think we could be encouraged when we see someone going through something even more difficult than what we're going through, and we see them have faith, and we see them thinking about others. Well, one of the ways that Paul was able to have this attitude was this. It says in Philippians chapter four, verse six, he writes and, and, and he tells them not to worry about anything, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So one of the ways that we could deal with our own anxiety and difficulty is this, not to be anxious. Um, and don't take that as a, a guilt thing if you're anxious. I mean, who isn't during times like this? But what Paul is saying is don't fix your mind on the things that are going to cause more and more anxiety. Instead, pray about everything. And then as you pray, Notice he says, with thanksgiving, make a list. Um, go around the table tonight as you're kind of sheltering in place and hunker down and maybe just go each person and say, what is something that you're thankful for right now? What is something maybe that even in the midst of this uh, COVID-19 outbreak, that maybe there's some way that God is using this to cause you to remember, hey, I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful we have shelter. Maybe maybe I'm thankful for a way to 
really think about what's important in life. So Paul says, don't be anxious for anything, but pray uh, with thanksgiving, make, make your request to God. And then he says this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Notice that he doesn't say it's a peace that comes from understanding. Sometimes we're trying to look for a peace that if I just understand this COVID-19 coronavirus thing, then maybe I'll get some peace. And you won't. Because as a pastor, I've been having to do a deep dive into the news more than I ever have. Um, I'm having to monitor different websites to find out what are the rules about engagement and personal interaction. Um, Usually, honestly, I try to avoid a lot of the news and then just have it in bits and pieces at a specific time. Right now, I've been having to scroll through news feeds. I want to encourage you, when it comes to what you set your mind on, your emotions, uh, your thoughts, your, your spiritual walk, those things follow. So Paul goes on to tell us that this is a peace of God. It surpasses understanding and it will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. I wanna guard my heart, I wanna guard my mind during these times from spiraling. And, and I, I'm like you guys, I just want you to know that. Um, it's not like there's ever a level of attaining where, okay, I'm not anxious anymore, or I don't go through anxiety anymore. As human beings, it's something that's common to all of us. Yesterday, I found myself spiraling a little bit I found myself short with my wife, short with my kids, kind of snappy because we're all in close confines and things are getting messy and like, hey, you used more than one glass. Like that's against the rules. You can't do one glass for everyone. Um, You know, clean up your own mess, you know, wash your hands. And I just, I found myself a little bit on edge and I needed to come back to this place today of allowing my mind to think on the things that are good. It says, final verse I'll share with you. Paul says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, okay, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate, think on these things. And the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, put into practice and do these things and the God of peace will be with you. So during this time, I I would suggest some practical advice as we close, some application. Go to legitimate news sources for what's going on. Um, If you just watch network news continually, um, they're gonna look for extremism. They're gonna look for the most newsworthy items and and it could bog you down, It, it bogs me down. So for me in Santa Cruz County, the website that I look at is Santa Cruz Health. Um, It's the Santa Cruz Department of Health because I want to find out what's happening locally. I might go to uh, the CDC if I want more information about the coronavirus, but I don't want to just read that continually. If I do, it causes a little bit of a fear in me, but I'll tell you, if you have children in the home, they will catch what you have. It, and I don't mean that, no pun intended. Um, faith is caught more than it's taught sometimes. And I could say, hey, don't worry. But if they see me worrying, they're going to worry. They're going to take the cues of faith and calm from you. I also want to encourage you um, that during these times, as Paul wrote, whatever things are true and noble, these good things, these beautiful things, share good things. Um Take pictures. If you live, uh, um, Shane Daniels, he's a missionary in Hungary. He said, hey, if you're living in a beautiful place, please share those things with everyone else around the world. And let's concentrate on on some of those things. Uh, Creativity. God is the creator. Creativity comes from him. Have you, um, I I was just thinking last night, what if we did a, a painting party? you know, in our house? Or what if you did a like a Bob Ross type of thing? Hey, we're all gonna try to draw this. We're gonna paint this and we're gonna share it online in this virtual meeting. Um, read books. Um, our, our kids, some of our kids are doing this thing called a writer's guild. And what they're doing is they're, they're actually gonna start writing and they're going to be sharing 
poems, short stories, novels, things that they're writing in their progress. And then for the kids, make it fun for them. Um, when I was a kid growing up, when we had a blackout and the electricity would go out, um, I think my parents hated it. As a kid, I loved it because my siblings and my mom, they made it fun. Uh, we put bed sheets up and we had flashlights and we pretended that we were camping and, you know, we put a little fire, you know, we didn't have a fire, but you could do that. You could have a fire in your fireplace. We didn't have a fireplace growing up, but those are things that you could do. Um, also in the comments below, if you have a need and you're local, if you're elderly, you cannot get outside to do some of the shopping, uh, some of the things that, um, you know, maybe even things we haven't thought of. You know, uh, Reeve Lively, who's our um, new youth pastor, you know, he's like, hey, you guys just hired me and now I can't even meet <laughs> with the youth group. So I, I hope that you, you connect, you know, via Instagram, Facebook, what have you. But if you have a need in your local, there's other people in the area that would like to help as well. Um, I know that Brian uh, Jolly said, hey, let me know. He emailed me, Pastor Matt, if there's anyone that needs, um, you know, an errand or something to be fixed or what have you, we, we could do those things. Um, Dana also has provided curriculum for our kids. And, and if you're living outside of the area, if you want like kids ministry things, resources, let us know and we'll email you um, some of those lessons, some of those packets, um, things that you could do that are fun, worship songs with them at home. And then finally, um, subscribe to our newsletter. There are people from our own church that said, hey, we, we didn't know you're doing these Facebook Live things. I'm like, well, have you subscribed to our newsletter? They're like, no. So you could put that in the comments as well, and we'll send that out to you whether you're near or far, you know, like Grover, near, <laughs> near or far. Um, we're learning. We're all learning. We're all growing. I'm doing this thing right now where uh, we're getting a corporate Zoom account. I'm actually thinking about doing a Wednesday night, not tonight, Life Church is canceled tonight, but maybe by next Wednesday, if we have this set up, I think I could have like 300 people in the classroom where I could actually see your faces like Brady Bunch squares and we could teach through a Bible passage and you could raise your hand and I could mute people so it's not super noisy and uh, other people can go ahead and uh, they could grow, they could learn as well. So um, those things are coming. Um, let's stay connected. Be a light in your community. Um, this is a time in a season where the church should really not be under the bushel, you know, or, or the basket. Like, I don't, <laughs> we shouldn't hide our light. Uh, we should share during times like this because Jesus said, all people will know that you're my disciples by your love for one another. So God bless you. Stay safe. Um, and uh, let's, let's all stay um, with our eyes focused on things that are good and pure not from selfish intent. Let's be like Jesus. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. Uh, see you, Lord willing, tomorrow at noon.